talk about what effect this hurting instinct has had on the way this generation views investing. You and I have a very similar writing style because yes. I, I love metaphors. Mm -hmm. I, I think visually, I think, I think you do too. Yours are better. Uh, <laughs> yours are <laughs> they're very good. So, but in that 2017 paper, um, I think I, I, I wanted to use the idea of an Ouroboros, this concept of a snake devouring its own tail. Mm -hmm. And what this was a metaphor for what is now about $3 trillion in equity markets alone, this is just equity markets, U.S. equity markets. If we, we that, that number is much larger, larger if you expand that uh, across asset classes. But of strategies that use volatility as an input for taking risk, mm -hmm. but also seek to generate excess yield, either through selling volatility or through the assumption of stability. Right. Um, so in this number, you have implicit and explicit short volatility strategies. And I think there's a lot of confusion as to what this means. Mm -hmm. Explicit short volatility strategies are strategies that they, they will sell derivatives. So they'll sell options. So the um, easiest would be selling the VIX. Selling the VIX, that's okay. right. So this paper came out um, prior to the XIV blow up and it, it, uh, it uh, talked about how the VIX ETPs were, were likely to have significant problems. Mm -hmm. But that's a very small component of that short volatility trade. Um, a much larger component of the shortfall trade are strategies that um, replicate the risk uh, parameters of short volatility trades, but may not actually be shorting volatility. Okay. So strategies, strategies like this might be things like volatility targeting funds or some elements of risk parity, for example. It's and not risk parity is still something we don't hear a lot about, even though it's massive. Yes, yeah. And, and, and the... The framework there is it, this could be any anything between literally shorting vol, literally shorting volatility, what I'll call short gamma or being short trend, and we could talk a little bit more about that. Um, short correlations, um, short interest rates, these are risk factors of a portfolio of short options that various financial engineering strategies will replicate. Maybe mm -hmm. not all of them, but certain aspects of them. That doesn't mean all these strategies are bad. It just means that they are formulated to a world where interest rates are dropping, assets are mean reverting, and that uh, volatility is quite low. Mm -hmm. And guess what has happened the last 40 years? Uh, we are at generational lows in volatility across asset classes. Asset trending, I think this is something most people don't realize, that actually assets, equity for example, used to trend higher and lower. You can measure that through something called autocorrelation. Mm -hmm. um, all that means is that if today was down, um, it is likely that tomorrow will be up um, and, and vice versa. By well, the dip. By the dip, that's right. So the uh, assets for the greater part of a lifetime uh, were autocorrelated in the sense that uh, higher prices resulted in higher prices and lower prices resulted in lower prices. That autocorrelation peaked right when Nixon delinked uh, the dollar versus the gold, or the US dollar versus gold. And we have underwent a uh, multi decade decrease in autocorrelations. And, mm -hmm. and now we're at really peak mean reversion in markets. So a lot of strategies um, make the assumption that mean reversion is implicit to, to asset price behavior. That's definitely not always the case. So, to that point, um, one of the strategies we actually tested was buy the dip. How would buy the dip perform going back 90 years? Uh -huh. This is very interesting. Buying the dip, you don't think of it as a short volatility strategy, but it is short gamma, or it's short that autocorrelation effect. Mm -hmm. Well, buy the dip has performed incredibly well over the last 10 years, um, and really over the last 20 years, as central banks have been very reactive to, to market stress. That's an understatement. Right? Well, it's very interesting. If you go back and you test buy the dip over 90 years, that strategy goes bankrupt three times. Bankrupt's a big word. I mean, flat out loses all of its money three times over a 90 year history. It is only really in the last 10 years where it's compounded at about 10% a year where we've seen that outperformance. I think that might 
let's see, is that the quantitative easing era? I think so. It is. I, I think, it's not I a coincidence. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. not a coincidence at all.